Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about systems design and juniors. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, at what point do you think a junior should learn either systems design or database design? Well, I would say that you're going to very likely learn systems design in a very organic fashion. I don't think that's something necessarily you have to study, but if you do choose to do so, you can pick up practically any introduction book to system design. And the thing about systems design, guys, is that for most of it, it's going to be the same thing. There are a few patterns and strategies that will be very, very common. The one thing I think that you should know about is the layered architecture, but this is less of a systems design as a whole thing, and I would say more of an application strategy or an application design. So the layered pattern is very simple. I will give you the crash course right here now, that's how simple it is. The idea is very simple that you have different layers to your application and you pass through these layers in order to respond to some request. So the first layer is going to be the UI layer usually, which is the layer where the user is using your application if it's a web application. It doesn't have to be there all the time, but it would be the top layer if it's a web page. And then after that there is the uh, application layer, which is going to be where the URL request comes in, like someone goes to one of your web pages or clicks a link or you do some type of Ajax call with JavaScript and it hits your backend server. The la layer underneath, the, of the, uh, underneath is going to be the business layer where the actual logic takes place. This is where you spend most of your days uh, writing code that does something. It can be anything from adding a product to a cart or something like that to logging in as a user, right? All these things. And in order for you to be able to usually make anything meaningful happen, you need to save that in some fashion. So usually under the business layer is the repository layer or the database layer or the persistent layer, which is where you connect to some persistent system. It can be saving something to a, a, like a file to the file system, or it can be something like saving to a database. Now that's the basics. This you can you can of course go and look this up. It's an this name is uh, it's an established name, the layered architecture, and the others are fairly established as well. You can, there are books on this. I don't think that you should go all that deep into this though because it's not going to be relevant for you because 99% of the time the layered architecture is what you're going to use. And I do mean 99% of the time. I have so far never worked on a project where we used anything else. It's that it's that rare. So apart from that, if we talk about systems design, I think that you should have an understanding of the differences between monolithic applications and SOA or service oriented, oriented architecture. The reason why I focus on these two is because they are, they make up, once again, 99% of all of the application or system designs out there. And it's for a very good reason, because usually when a product starts out, it starts out very small. And that means that everything about your application can run in the same code base, in the same instance uh, of a server. So you build a monolith, almost always, and then usually what happens is that you identify that you need a new service or you need some way of moving out some code from that monolith into a smaller repository or split it in some fashion. And you do this because it becomes unpractical, impractical, to stay on the same code base. And then you split it out and now you have two monolithic applications or semi-monolithic applications that need to talk to each other and this is where a distributed system is like that's what we call it basically a distributed system or SOA service oriented architecture so you have these these two different services that need to work together in order to deliver that value that we are giving to our customers right now 
if you really want to, and it's going to be hard for you, because when I say SOA, guys, the the thing is, if you go and Google so SOA right now, you're most likely going to find something that is going to be very close to what I just explained to you. But the term that pretty much everybody uses, even though it's not always correct, is microservices. Everybody, is, you can think of SOA has, for better or for worse, been baked into the term microservices, and everything that is basically a distributed system today is called a microservices architecture, even though that's not actually true. It doesn't really matter. Like, uh, I'm not going to be a grammar Nazi or like anything like that. I, I don't really care if we call it microservices. It's just that when people say, oh, we're using microservices in in its core, there's a few rules that you need to follow in order to call something a microservice, but it doesn't really matter. So if you really want to go and get into the definition of microservice, of microservice and so forth, you can go and look, at, look that up. And you're probably going to confuse yourself because it's going to be really hard for you to find a very accurate definition of what it actually means. There's a vague understanding of what the differences between SOA and microservices. And honestly guys, it's uh, it's kind of like champagne. Everybody, if you think that that's, a specific, that that's like the the brand champagne is uh, is an it's just a name that encompasses everything at this point even though there are many other sparkling wines that you could pick from and it's the same thing here if uh, it's uh, it's uh, it becomes an umbrella term microservices microservices have pra practically become an umbrella term for everything that is a distributed network a distributed system at this point but when it comes to database design, I need to say that I don't think that it's all that important for you to know about database design because it's not really that important for a junior developer to know the pros and the cons of using a database because most of the time you're going to find yourself in one of two situations. The first situation is going to be you work on a project. The second thing is that you're going to find yourself working alone. And in both of these scenarios, there's only every there's only ever so many times where the the differences between different databases make sense. I guess the one thing I think that you should know about is document databases and relational databases. There are other types of course, but these are going to make up once again 99% of your use cases because when you're doing standard web development, you're just doing CRUD. Uh, operations you just you're just saving things creating them deleting them updating them and these things can be done in a relational database and it can be done in a document database and there are of course b pros and cons to the whole thing but the thing is some might make you believe that these differences are more important than they are and in some cases absolutely they do make a difference but i can tell you right now that there are really large applications, really sophisticated systems where you can very clearly today look at them and say in hindsight it probably would have been better if they had used a relational database or a graph database or a document database but they're still doing fine. It's still working, everything's going, it's all working and you mean in a really horror scenario you could migrate to a different database if you did pick the wrong one. So I think that as a junior you're not going to most of the time have a need to get really into the details if you should if you should use mongodb or if you, you should use postgres or mysql pick the one that seems the simplest for your use case or the one that you feel more most comfortable with unless you're doing something very specific and I can, in a different video, go into the details on when you should very seriously consider one over the other. But, as I said, just relax. Most of the time, almost all the time, probably for the rest of your career, you're never going to actually see the real benefits of having one over the other. Because not almost everything you do can be done with both of these in practically an equal fashion. So, what I want you to take away from this is that you should know about a layered architecture, application architecture. You should know about 
a distributed system and a monolithic application and distributed system is and their alias is microservices so know about it you don't have to go super deep into this and finally as for for databases it's not that meaningful for you to know about the different types of designs of database knowing about a document database and a relational database is going to be fine it's going to be just enough because both of them follow they are very common and they're used for sort of the same purposes you're just storing information and gathering that information and that should set you up for most of the work that you're going to do as a software developer have a great day